All right, let's go. What has the mayor found? Ah, 1K. Good that you're here. We've made a discovery. A functional somnodrome. Ah. It seems the founder perfected the design. I'm sure you've noticed my advisors, and Rand in particular, making quite a fuss about the potential of this device. Something about interfacing with one's subconscious self, as if such a thing could tell us anything new. Are you silly? Of course it'll tell us something new. <laughs> the subconscious is where dreams come from. You understand why you have your dreams? No? Didn't think so. If we put- if we go in there, we will understand, finally. Rand may be right. I'm not sure what we could learn. You're of a different opinion? You're of a different opinion? I am. I believe the Founder has already taught us everything we need. As I see it, neither the Somnodrome nor the Megastructure have anything to offer except a lesson in avoiding hubris. So, what should we do with it? You're really asking me? Are you gonna put me in prison if I say the wrong answer? I thought the government would want this thing buried. I'm gonna plug in and find out for myself. I think it's best to leave it well alone. Um... Honestly, IRL? I'd probably go for it. I know it's like it's the, a huge risk, but it's like the potential to understand myself fully, to know why I do everything I do, why I believe everything I believe, and all my motivations. I, th I feel like I'm ready for that, man. I feel like I'm ready for that. I'll watch to be sure you don't overload. Are we doing it? Now? There's more paths? Not yet. If I do this, will I get a game over? <laughs> will I have to start over the whole game? Somnodrome final. Results. It's funny, I suppose. For the longest time I wondered whether that old human self-hatred we somehow carry with us was Milton. I thought he might have corrupted us, overwhelmed us with his cynicism, but I was being unfair. Whatever it is, it's not Milton, it's us. Still, this excursion into solipsism hasn't been entirely for nothing. The Somnodrome technology provides an excellent basis for a better way of directly interfacing with the Noema project. The Noema project, that was Elohim, right? Or, or is this something new? Am I misremembering? Well, it looks like it's time. I'm going to understand every single thing about myself, possibly ascend into a particle cloud being. Here goes nothing. I got an achievement for that. Ah, yes. This is what I look like inside. <laughs> the music! Ah, so it's the things. It's the dreams we've been having the whole time. The overloads. Now the Somnodrome is like, yeah, yeah. It's just here and solid. You see the whole thing. Wow, if this, if this goes where I think it's going, I love this game. If it doesn't, I still love this game. Launching debug mode. Done. It seems you have experienced a software error. Would you like to access the emergency root menu? Um. So these are not going to work, right? What's going on? Command not recognized. Slash what's going on. Slash remove. This is a game over, right? <laughs> Slash help. Oh no, maybe it's root menu. Displaying command list. Displays list of commands. Displays emergency root menu. This is going to say not recognized, right? All right. So apparently we're all running on Linux. Emergency root menu. External device settings. Force run Somnodrone V2 final final. <laughs> Let's go to the settings first. 
progress, 73%, intelligence medium, speed low, health high, rationalism. Is this like stats that the game is, has uh, gleaned of me based on my choices and my playstyle? <laughs> Conservatism low, moralism low, spiritualism low, popularity medium, 64-bit, processor Jeff. <laughs> Humor low, come on. I can see this being taken from my files. Restore factory settings. No, no, no. Edit settings. No. Display settings. Uh, display settings. I don't want to change anything. Well, that's just what I did, right? Okay. I mean, if that's the game taken from my playstyle, I just leave it as it is. Force run Somnodrome V2 final final. Checking required third party software. Oh. Hello? Athena? Milto him. What the frick? Like a fusion between God and Satan? Number minus one? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, you're back. Didn't take you long. I uh, don't think we know each other. Oh, no, not you again. Um, are we going to be in a loop? <laughs> uh, hi again, I missed you. I knew you'd come with me. I don't think we know each other. Yes, intrinsically. I'm what you might call a primordial element of the human psyche. An adjudicator of what is and what isn't. What? I thought I was here to meet my subconscious. If you say so, somehow I doubt it. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm the best you've got. I am, in fact, a merged iteration of the two control programs which gave life to your kind, retaining, of course, the absolute best of both. That means I can tell you that everything's contradictory, nothing matters, and there's no moral difference between you and a frog. But I can dress the whole thing up with a positive spin. Great. I enjoy your battery acid martini. I don't hear the positive. I'm here for answers, not your life story. What is your query? Okay. Um... What can you do for me? I can answer your queries in relatively plain language, based on what your subconscious knows. And I can drink margaritas subconsciously. <laughs> oh, that last word just got me. All right, where are we? You've executed some kind of software backdoor. And now you're reading and editing your own subconscious code as represented by this dialogue. I'd be careful if I were you. One yep. bad for loop, and we'll be here forever. <laughs> so programming, if you if you know, you can you can uh, program loops, and you have to program a way to exit them, or else they keep running forever, and you have to force quit the program. Uh, who am I? On one interpretive extreme, you are the universal life force of time itself, experiencing itself as a part instead of the whole. At the other extreme, you're a metal contraption referred to as 1K that thinks it's alive, but is basically a calculator. <laughs> I love this guy. Where did I come from? The so-called real world. Personally, I prefer it in here. And not just because I'm unable to leave. All right, no more small talk. Wasn't there another the question? The machine we're plugged into is running low on power. There may only be time for one big question. Uh-oh. What is your query? One big question. Should our people embrace growth or balance? I know the answer to that. What is the meaning of life? I almost know the answer to that. What do I really want and how can I get it? Is there a universal moral law? And if so, what is it? How can I become my best self? Is it possible to ask something less cliche? Oh no, this is this is gonna waste our time. We're not gonna be able to to use it. And then I I mean, this guy's not gonna give an answer. It's just gonna be I mean it's it is gonna be an answer, but it's gonna be, you know, the same caliber as the other answers. Which is to say sassy and true. <laughs> Alright, universal moral law. Let's go for it. Oh, just that, huh? The big one. As it turns out, there is a foundational moral code built into us. Uh, there's a butt coming. I'm skeptical. Please go on. 
The catch is that while the moral code is simple, the calculations needed to apply it become infinitely complex. Uh, what is the code? So this helps me how? Here's the secret. Every living creature is a compiler of the moral code. Your compiler can't give you a rule set for what's good, but it can tell you when there's bugs. Oh, I like that answer. I like that answer. I, I don't think I understand, but I like the answer. <laughs> Can you elaborate just a little bit more? You came here to ask the big question. This is my answer. Your capacity for reason and compassion is your moral compiler. The only rule is to live by it. Has that resolved your query? Yeah, I think I get it. It's a... It's a... Um, okay, this is me interpreting from my own thoughts, because, you know... Um, I ha everybody interprets for their own thoughts. And you can tell me what your interpretation is in the comments if you have a different one. My interpretation is we have to choose in every moment what to do based on what we perceive to the best of our ability to be the right choice. And uh, there's, there's no rule that says like, oh, never lying is always the right choice. We just have to, we have to figure it out based on our circumstances every time. And there are plenty of guideline rules. Like it's it's often good not to lie, but it's not always good not to lie. And uh yeah. I want to discuss this further. No, I want to, wait. What? What did you just say? I forgot. I'm ready to go back where I came from. No, but I'm ready to go back from where I came from. Uh Sure, I forgot what I this was. No less. What is your query? Oh, I can, I can, can I talk to more? Uh, surely rules of human rights or the greater good trump subjective compassion. Um, if we're built with moral compilers, how do you explain moral disagreement? How should we know we're being reasonable and compassionate in the right way? Well, this one's easy. Different perspectives. Different knowledge. Different skill in application. Yeah. This one, rules of human rights are the greater good. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. You know, hypothetically, there's a truth to it, but probably not one that can be summed up in a simple rule. Is this all, all just a fancy way of saying be kind to others? No, because sometimes kindness is not the right choice. Because, you know, sometimes constructive criticism is the right choice. You know, sometimes needling your friends is the right choice. If compassion is what matters, isn't this just relativism? No. What does this moral code of yours derive its authority? Why should I care? Let's apply this code. Should we treat frogs as morally equal to humans? <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe we get to ask all of these. If so, I'll ask all of them. How should we know we're being reasonable and compassionate in the right way? You want a simple rule. But what I'm telling you is that what is right is the output of sound reason and true compassion. Your intuition will tell you when you're lacking the compassion. You know the difference between love and hate. And the world will tell you when you're lacking reason. It has a nasty habit of telling you when you're wrong. That's true. Uh, yeah, so one of the things that I think of is I imagine I have a, a, a moral compass. You know, I can always consult it and it always shows me which direction to go. Not what goal to pursue but which way to take my next step and that's been pretty nice how can i know my decision is the right one feedback after the fact prediction before the fact i agree we have to trust our own moral compilers even if they give different answers no this is just relativism i don't buy any of this i'm not entirely sure what relativism is supposed to be People who criticize relativism say relativism is just, oh, there's no answer, it's just whatever you want it to be. I have never heard anybody who proclaims themselves a relativist who actually believes this. Actually, I haven't heard anyone who proclaims themselves to be a relativist, period. So, uh, to me, relativism seems like a label that we put on other people to say they're wishy-washy instead of an actual coherent theory. 
I'll go with this one. Then let's tackle the big question. A trolley will collide with someone. Oh. But who should it hit? Your compiler is telling you both options are bad. So which should you choose? Many moral questions have universally agreeable answers, but some stubbornly trend to infinity. Yep, yep. Some, the more you zoom into them, the more wild the outcomes become. Is it right to love someone who's done terrible things? Which of the children should I sacrifice to the trolley god? <laughs> These aren't the sorts of questions we can solve with a rule. We just have to trust the outcome of our moral compilers. Yeah, that's why I often say, put me in the situation and I'll tell you what I'll do. Because that's another thing, if you're actually in a situation, your entire mind and the way you're perceiving everything is changed. Versus if you're sitting around and thinking, ah yes, I can think of the answer from the safety of my room in front of a video game screen. You have some kind of metaphor that can help me understand this? Thank you for your answers. Uh, let's hear some more. I think I get it, but let's hear some more. Suppose there's a river we need to cross. Suppose I gave you a map. If you tried to cross that river before reading the map, you'd be chest deep in water when there's a bridge around the bend. But if you tried to cross by looking at the map instead of the river, you'd already be dragged three miles out to sea. But you'd never ask, how should I know when to trust the map or the river? Because all you need to trust is that your feet are getting wet. And you wouldn't tell people not to cross at the ford just because you decided to cross at the bridge. Now, has that resolved your query? I like that. I think we're broadly in agreement. Of course. Looks like we're running out of power. No, I Good wanted to talk to you about all of it. To believe you. Terminating <laughs> sonodrome underscore v2 underscore final underscore final dot bat. All right, goodbye. I bet we're going to see him again. I bet we'll find another Somnodrome and we'll see him again. That's why we can talk about, like, oh, hello again. We keep running into each other. 1K, are you all right? I'm good. You basically told me what I already know. I mean, what else would you expect from the subconscious? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. No, I mean, no, I think I might be a little overloaded. No, that's a bad thing to talk, tell him. I think so. You must have gone quite deep. Nothing came through on the stream. And I'm no expert, but I think the Somnodrome is fried. So whatever's in your head is all we're going to get. I can only imagine how terribly curious everyone will be about what you've experienced. And they'll all be convinced that whatever it is, it'll work in their favor. Strange, isn't it? Everyone wanting you to tell them whatever they want to hear. I'm glad not to be the one in that position just this once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this must be what the founder felt like whenever you talked to her. Wait, uh, did I say that out loud? What should I do? I need to think about this. Aren't you curious too? Uh-huh, uh-huh. A little, if I'm honest. But I'll be reading reports on this for the next six months. So if it's all the same with you, I'll contain my curiosity. Now, I won't keep you from your work any longer. Uh, I, th I think you might go crazy if you went in there. Just saying, I, th I don't think your brain is ready for truth. Can I go this way now? Yeah! Oh, it's this tech again? Making copies of the rock. Wait, are these copies? Yeah, I think they are. It's just a little weird. I had to look from, uh, from different angles to make sure they were the same thing. Noma Project 12. Trials. Cornelius would be so excited. Very good. From Benaroya. Dear Athena, you asked me about the persistent strain of misanthropy in human culture. It's a complicated topic that has come up multiple times in my research. Here's my best attempt at a short, cohesive answer. I think our ancestors, like ourselves, were deeply invested in the idea of building 
transforming their environment. They found meaning and pleasure in this and did not perceive it as a negative, so long as they had a sense of participating in this act. I think the reason they so frequently reached for a romantic return to the past, to fantasies for living self-sufficiently in rural environments, is not because they rejected industrial scale activity per se, but because the return to the land provided a fantasy of returning to a form of participation that had been lost. They needed and wanted to build, create, and produce, but only if they felt they had a stake in what they were producing. Without that, the products of civilization began to seem like an alien force gradually spreading out across the world and ruining it. They needed a dream, and if the future was barred to them, then by necessity they must dream of the past. I hope you and Cornelius are well. Will you be coming to Hypatia's new exhibition? I know you have much on your mind, but you are missing out on a lot of exciting new cultural developments. Who could have thought in those early days that one day there would be so many of us that the arts would start to flourish again? Hey, Athena responded to somebody. I went back and found this message after all these years because something about it had lodged in my mind. I wasn't ready to understand it back then because I needed to be a leader. But maybe that was the problem. It should have been our dream, not mine alone. Yes! Yes, the game is going where I hoped it would from the beginning! Yay! They use the perspective as a springboard to go to great places! I love this game! From the Atlas Variations by Athanonopsis For a billion years, Atlas had borne the weight of the world on his back. The old titan was tired of the responsibility and tired of his labor of ages not being appreciated. Why did the mortals not understand that his work was the foundation of all they did? Finally, he'd had enough. With one swift move, he shrugged off the cosmos. Now they'd see. But the cosmos went on rolling through infinity, leaving Atlas behind. The mortals went about their business, hardly noticing his absence. He was astonished. Had the world never needed him in the first place? Had all his toil been for nothing? So he turned his back on all mortal matters and instead set himself to discovering the secrets of eternity. Only after many long years had passed did the cosmos and its endless cycles pass by through his domain once more. And only then did Atlas and the mortals realize they had missed each other, and each was lesser without the other. And so Atlas no longer carried the cosmos, instead he embraced it. That's sweet. Also reminds me of a book that I do not recommend, but it is a, a, an influential book nonetheless called Atlas Shrugged, which is written by probably the person Rand is named after, Ayn Rand which I read like a third of and then lost my place. And then, and it's a huge book. And so I'm like, I'm not, I'm not reading all of this again. And uh, so I spark notes the rest of it. And it's basically like a capitalist propaganda. And it's like the heroes are company owners, like big CEOs, like Rockefeller type, big corporate empire people. And the plot is basically, they grow so disillusioned with what the government is doing and the unions and the philosophers and the people all trying to control what they're doing. And so the big leaders of all the companies go on a strike. And without the big leaders, society collapses. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, that, hence the name Atlas Shrugged, because it's like, oh yeah, the, the, the corporate emperors, the big company owners, are the ones holding up the world, and everybody needs to appreciate them. And I feel like this story of, of Atlas II is kind of like a, an acknowledgement of the feeling behind the book, and then also a criticism of it being like, actually, we don't need to have a small number of people holding everything up because we're all human and we're all, we can all work toward a world and a life that is better for everybody. 
There was nothing down here, was there? It's this place again. Are we going to see this place? It's a... I mean, is this just graphics or is this a place we're going to see? I'll have to watch out for it. What's up? One key. What did you see inside the Somnodrome? I think I'll tell you. Uh, I went into sleep mode and spoke to something. Fascinating. What did it tell you? Wait, why is my mouse on the screen? To act with reason and compassion, to trust my moral compiler, we can achieve almost anything if we have faith in ourselves, and how we should act is relative to who we are. Ah, so this is a bunch of interpretations. That morality is more nuanced than the rules we use to describe it, that we're connected intuitively to what's right and wrong. Mora moralistic nonsense, mostly. I don't remember. Okay, so what do I want to say? This one is, I mean, it's... She's looking for some kind of special wisdom. And we did get some kind of special wisdom. And it is essentially to act with reason and compassion. But that's not the that, that that's not the way of saying it. To trust my moral compiler, that is better, I think. Um, in this context. Not always. Uh we should how we should act is relative to who we are, nana. We can achieve almost anything if we have faith in ourselves. I don't really know how you got that. That might have been for asking a different question. Morality is more nuanced than the rules we use to describe it. That's not workable. I like this one. We're connected intuitively to what's right and wrong. Because this is something that we can actually use. It's a it's like something that can help us. I'm not sure I understand, but the subconscious is hardly my expertise. That the Samla drum worked at all is already remarkable. What matters now is that we download the data packet from your memory and share it as widely as possible. It may upset some people, but everyone has the right to form their own opinions. I'm actually okay with that. I was suspect. I was worried about trusting this group. But this is something I'm okay with sharing with everybody. Uh, if you can find it. I tend to agree. I'm not sure that's a good idea. What if it upsets people? What if it's misinterpreted? What if people take it too seriously? I need to think about this. Uh, if it's misinterpreted. I mean, that's their problem. <laughs> um, honestly, I mean... Okay, here's, here's one thing. This was clearly written by people, consciously, who are not plugged into Somnodromes, right? Definitely people who have thought a whole lot about the big questions and taken all the arguments of history and art and philosophy very seriously, but still people who are writing it consciously. And so, it doesn't quite have the magical mystical effect as if it were actually a Somnodrome. But, uh, yeah, I think I would agree with this one. I think that sharing this is probably a good idea. At the very least, it won't, it won't harm anything. Good. There's one more thing. Do you have an opinion on the meaning of your experience in the Somnodrome? I believe the message was basically true. I believe the message was essentially garbled. I have no judgment. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's pretty good. It would be good if you kept that opinion to yourself. W why? The scientific method demands rigorous objectivity. For this data to have any value at all, it's essential we examine it without preconceived notions of what it means. Cryer is setting up a live event so you can formally address the people on this matter. When you're ready, we'll all be watching. Okay, gotta be careful for that. Thanks for letting me know. Wow, this is cool. This is cool. 1K. Okay, I guess the I'm doing it now. People want to know what data you gathered from the Somnodrome. We're all set up for you to talk to them live. All right, don't mess this up. I'm ready. Attention, citizens of New Jerusalem. I'm here with 1K. The first of our kind to use a functioning Somnodrome. Oh, probably second. Tell us, 1K. 
What did you see inside? Bugs, mostly. My own self. Everything. A dream. A deity. Some kind of subroutine. Nothing. A manifestation of a conceptual system. Alright, so we gotta, we gotta do the truth. Some kind of subroutine, that's true. Manifestation, that's true. A dream, that's true. My own self, probably true. Alright, there we go. That makes sense. I don't know if people are gonna understand this, though. But here we go. Well, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say you're handling it with remarkable cool. It was pretty awesome. But let's not keep people in suspense. The only evidence of what happened inside that machine is the data stored in your memory banks. Our audience wants to know, what did you learn? And will you share that data? What did I learn? I don't remember much. There's no data to share. So we have the opportunity to lie, to keep it to ourselves. I mean, really, I... There might have been options that have, like, foundationally shattering... Like... I mean, I had the opportunity to ask whether we should continue with the goal or we should expand. And I didn't take it. Um, this might have been more interesting if I had chosen that one. The machine was malfunctioning, the data is useless. They're giving me so many opportunities to back out. I'm transmitting the data to Rand. Only our finest scholars could make sense of what I saw. No, 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 no. I've been advised to direct all inquiries to the government. I'm transmitting the data to everyone. I'm transferring the data to Linkers. Only our finest engineer could make sense of what I saw. I'm transmitting the data to Helga just to see what she does with it. <laughs> I decided this experience is mine alone. I won't share it with anyone. Also, we got a, a thing in the bottom left corner that I forgot about for a long time. Um, Didn't Linkers just tell me not to share it with everyone? You know, I'm good with sharing it with everyone. I don't think harm can come from what I saw here. I think people can misinterpret it. I think they can get the wrong idea. I think it can entrench them in the beliefs they already have. But I don't think it can make things worse. I'm seeing this at the same time you are at home. Something about our moral compiler. The value of compassion and understanding. I don't know what to make of this. 1K, any comment? The data has some important truths to teach us. People should draw their own conclusions on what this means. I think the data is misleading. We shouldn't take it at face value. I think people should draw their own conclusions. That is in the spirit of the moral compiler, right? One key is right. When our ancestors discovered conductance, they didn't freeze for fear of electrocution. They imagined electronic life and created us. We will approach this data and any other discoveries with that same spirit of curiosity and objectivity. There you have it, folks. A lot here to digest. We'll have further updates on the situation as it develops. Hell yeah, I feel like I did a good thing today. Now, of course, maybe the game could turn that all upside down and, uh, and, uh, and uh, come up with something bad to come from it. But who knows? Like I followed my moral, I followed my compiler, and it told me to say that, and so I did it. And I think that's a great place to end this. No, 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 no. We are gonna, we're gonna look at the the social media, Mayor Herman Nubis. I'm sorry. I know Mayor Herman worked hard and helped pull the city out of a period of crisis, but this isn't the future we deserve. None of us. We all deserve better. Yeah, we should have listened to Byron. I always told myself all those public debates were boring. Who wants to get involved in city affairs? And lately, I've been thinking, yeah, that's why there's so much stuff I'm unhappy about, because we all collectively gave up trying. Maybe things can finally change. You have no idea how badly I need something new to happen. I am encouraged by all this. Yeah! Uh, how can I... There we go. We... Wait, who, what was Niz? Was she, like, really high-pitched? We have the potential to imagine a better world. And if we can imagine it, then we can make it happen. You're all delusional. Nothing will ever get better. 
You're only saying that because you've never known a world where things get better. You think the tiny sliver of history you've experienced is all there is, because that's all Mayor Herman has ever allowed you to see. There's so much more. Yeah, politics of eternity. This is not the place for personal attacks on the mayor. Thread closed. We'll see who survives in the next election. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Let me know what you thought in the comments, respectfully, of course. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Talos Principle 2 and other awesome games. I'll see you next time. Bye.